Well, after half past one, we'll be talking about the race to be the London top club, but before then, we're going to focus on the footballing capital of England, maybe not Europe just yet. Nani picks up the possession, looks for Jones, Jones goes down in the penalty here, it'll break for Rooney, and it's 3 0. Adam Johnson turns onto his right foot, plays it across, and Balotelli is there to head it into the net. And we're seeing again the cool, cool Mario Balotelli goal celebration. It's pulled back to Ashley Young, his shot, 8 2. And that just ends it. Here's Silva, he's got it through to Dzeko. This is the chance. 6 1 to Manchester City. Number 24. Number 24 is Manchester City against. Number 25. Manchester United. Real nil, Napoli won, and that means regardless of the fact that Manchester City lead Bayern Munich by two goals to nil here, Manchester City are going out. And it's Champions League embarrassment for Manchester United. They've been knocked out by FC Basel, and Manchester United are going into the Europa League. So maybe Manchester, the footballing capital of England, maybe not Europe just yet, to talk all things City and United. We've still got Daniel Taylor and John Hanson with us. Uh, Mickey Thomas is on the way, former Manchester United player who watches the club regularly. David White played 286 times for City during the 80s and early 90s. A bit of a setback this week, or in the great scheme of things, David, it's just one of those things. How do you reflect upon it? Oh, a bit of both, I think. Obviously, I think the, the uh, primary reason if you like for this season is is the league and if if they can do that obviously champions league would have been a a massive bonus but uh, yeah, i'm sure if you you speak to lads here today they'll uh they take where they are now looking back two years four years ten years however long so it's uh it's an amazing turnaround for the club and uh going out of champions league is disappointing but there's uh there's other years to come in there certainly well let's start with a few city fans then tony's next to you tony going out of the champions league disappointing but if you win the premier league you won't even remember midweek, will you, going out against uh, Bayern Munich? Certainly not. I mean, always it's going to be the Premier League for us this year. And to be honest with you, going out of the Champions League, I think, can be a positive for City. If you look at the teams that's left in the Europa League now, our Carling Cup team is more than capable of winning that competition. And by doing that, it gives our squad and the players who are fringe players, shall we say, more games, more time on the pitch. And that'll keep them happy. So it makes the squad happier. Plus, um, if we go on to win that... And we take that and and the FA Cup as well. It's going to be a good season all round. Ah, you're getting greedy now. Colin, do you want to take it seriously? Do you want Manchester City to take the Europa League seriously? Yeah, because winning trophies, as much as United have shown over the years, winning trophies is addictive. It breeds a certain mentality. Um, you win trophies, you want more. So, yeah, I want to take it seriously. But we, obviously we want the Premier League this season more than anything else. Yeah, it's interesting to hear this, Daniel, isn't it? The Manchester City fans, rightly so, they can't be picky, can they? They can't be choosy. All right, it's only the Europa League, but frankly, uh, you know, we had a few call in, callers on Wednesday night saying, all we've won in the last 35 years up to last season was a few silver spoons every now and then. So, you know, why not the Europa League? Well, John and I were talking before we came on air. It's only 12, 13 years ago that Manchester City were playing Mansfield Town in the Auto Windscreen Shield. So, yes, the expectation is soared because of the money that's been spent, but I don't think um, in Abu Dhabi or, or, or it, um, the stadium that, that they actually imagined that this was a, a team that was going to win the, Euro, the, the European Cup this season. The priorities have always been the Premier League and the, there's already been noises from, from Abu Dhabi basically backing Mancini and, and talking about that the word they used was formidable, the, the form they've shown this season. Let's move to the red side then. Ian, you've been on Five Live before. First team ever to reach the Champions League final and the next season not reach the knockout stages. What happened? We lost. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? I think every United fan would uh, would have thought, seeing that group, we'd have got through. Uh, I think you know, Sir Alex said it himself, and it is you know, is a, su a surprise and a shock to all of us. But we can't be greedy. You know, three finals in four years, we've had a fantastic ride. Um, it's not the end of the line by any means, and uh, you know, we'll continue to get stronger. We uh, appreciate the competition and someone pushing us a bit more. You know, we'll take this challenge on this team and uh, keep moving forward. David, where were the problems? Another red there. Was it central midfield or was it goalkeeper? A little bit of both. What's going on? Um, I think the problems are probably over a number of games. I don't think you can you can put leaving the Champions League down to that one one evening. Um, I think the team has had a, a bad run of injuries this season, where there's been a lot of chopping and changing, not enough continuity. I think in the team um, and a few key players maybe a bit out of form. Uh, but as I said, it's December, very early in the season, so I don't think anybody's going to start panicking quite yet. 
Tell us what, uh, what work, Chris, you look far too young to be at work, actually. Do you work? Oh, yeah. You do, right, OK, you look far too young to be at work. What are workplaces now with your Man City friends? Is there a lot of good-natured stick? Uh, sometimes, I mean, <laughs> um, certain, certain people work um, in, our, in our place that, that don't necessarily go to the City games, you see. Um, but uh, uh, as a match going red myself, um, it's nice to see, you know, uh, you know, I was at the game at the weekend, and at least we won. But, um, yeah, so it's, it, the, the sticks uh, is it's getting more intense from the blue side, shall we say, um, especially over the, the recent result against them um, like last month. So. Yeah, well, you know, you're the footballing capital of the country, isn't it, David, at the moment, isn't it? Back to you, David White, isn't it? In the way that probably you could only wish it was when you were playing for Man City. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the, uh, the derbies, John will, John will say that any, any derby's a, a massive game, and, uh, and but that, that was it, really, when I was playing. <laughs> they were the two big games of the season. Uh, you know, we had a little success, and, and the, the fans have been starved of success, obviously. Over the road, the, the, um, the, the blueprint for them has been amazing over the, over the last 20 years, and, and City uh, have strived to get there, and, and now they've got the money to, to go and do that. So every game is a massive game. The City's absolutely flying. Obviously, you guys all coming up here, and, and that's... Uh, Stokes it all up as well, so it is amazing times, and uh, and we've we've got a, got a ride in it, and I hope that we uh, we keep it there for a good number of years. John, will they drag each other along and get better and better in the way that Rangers and Celtic? I mean, they are B two teams, obviously in Scotland, but inevitably two big teams, the two biggest teams, which they are at the moment in the same city, will drag each other along. Yeah, well, they? I don't think the Man City fans, you know, will be naive enough to think that this is it now. You know, the dominance over Manchester United. Manchester United are the benchmark. You know, Manchester United over the last 10, 15 years years they've won more Premier League titles I think they've won 75 percent of the Premier Leagues while they've been there and the Manchester City fans will realize that and um, you know they, they're not they're not getting above their station and thinking you know Manchester City have not whether they'll ever ever get to the standard of Manchester United and win as many Premier Leagues and Champions League and European Cups and be the success at the success rate Manchester United have ever got to but one thing you have got you've got a, a fantastically rich owner you've got a manager now that has settled in very well someone who's a appreciated by the crowd, won an FA Cup last season. It's, it's not an obsession to win the Champions League at Manchester City. I think if you go on and win the league, the Championship this year, I think that's acceptable. There'll be a lot more pressure then next year going into the Champions League and make sure you get to the second, stage, second stages. Uh, but as I said, I'm sure Manchester City fans are intelligent enough as fans to think, hold on a minute, yes, we can give you some stick, yes, we can enjoy the derby win, beat, you know, stuffing you 5-1, whatever it is. But nowhere near... You the goal out there, John. Yeah, 6-1, <laughs> whatever it was. But Man they City... wish over here it was only 5. <laughs> but Man City fans will be quick to realise as well that Manchester United, out of the Manchester clubs, have been the benchmark for a long, long time time that's what you aspire to get to what they've achieved yeah. voice the voice of reason in do you think manchester city have been let off a little bit by going out the champions league in midweek that frankly us in the media look, let, let's be honest where we sit the story is manchester united champions league finalists don't make the group stages not manchester city with all their gazillions on top of the league don't meet the group stages yeah, I think that yeah, you know the biggest shot was United not making it. I mean, again, I'll go back to your point. If you, if you looked at the groups beforehand, I think most uh, City fans would think it's going to be a tough job getting out of that group. Uh, for all the money that has been spent, you know, it's still relatively a new team where there was an expectation with United. Uh, and, you know, United is the story. If we don't succeed, that pressure is there all the time. Uh, John makes some very good points. Uh, you know, and, and Daniel's article in the week uh, was fantastic in it and a nail on the head the way a lot of United fans feel. I think he picked the story up from Red Issue with all myself, but um, it's, it, the pressure is always on with United. There's a bigger expectation. If City win the league this, this season, you know, they're, they're playing well, um, it, that, that's, they're going to be happy with that. I can totally understand that. But we're at a higher level. We're, you know, you've you got to be looking at us being in the top four teams in Europe consistently over over 10 15 years that is our expectation that's what we want to win that's that's the beating heart of the club you know that that is what we want we need to be f performing on a european stage continually daniel what was your article in the, in the week which was purely original thought i know what was the, what was the basis of what you wrote completely original yeah. thought. <laughs> well the, the the most startling part of it i think and the most and the, the thing that's got the most reaction is that the net spend for manchester united over the last 5 years is 57 million pounds which is less than stoke city sunderland aston villa so you have to you have to ask whether the success they've had in that time is down to the brilliance of one man um and he's actually doing it against the owners rather than with the owners because that, that I mean buying players doesn't necessarily equate to success and um, there's a lot more to it than that but it certainly helps it certainly helped Manchester City who've, who've in that time have spent 400 odd million pound net so 
there is an issue. There, there is a greater issue than uh, than just what's gone on on the on the field um, in, in the last. Uh, I also Achievers. think as well, Daniel and Mark, it's not, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion, you know, that Man City will win the title this year. What is it now? Four or five points, is it? You look at the games today. Ma Manchester United will win today. They'll beat Wolves today, a relatively, no disrespect to Mick McCarthy and Wolves, but United, you know, they'll be looking to respond from going out to the, the Champions League. They'll win today, I believe. Chelsea are on a good run now. They Manchester City visit, they go to Chelsea Monday night. Nowhere, nowhere near a, an easy game there. You know, Chelsea will, will be thinking they need to win that game at the bridge. All of a sudden, it's it's more or less level points again so you know we're, we start again then so I just think that uh, at the moment Man City are going so well they really really are that, that people even myself I tipped City at the start of the season you know it's important to think well hold on a minute they, they got to keep going like United have done over the years consistently well they've gone to the Chelsea they, they've got three points they've they, you know they've dug out a 1-0 win that's what City need to do and it's, it's not a foregone conclusion that they win the title interesting that the City have changed the way they played this season to a certain extent and we just go to the back row here Manchester City Swin is that Swinton and District Supporters Club Alex oh Alex you're not going to be playing today with a boot on Big protective boots. Sorry about that. But the way that you, City are playing this season has changed, isn't it? What is it? 48 goals, the most that any team has scored at this stage of the season. Whereas last season, we were all saying, weren't we, is Mancini ever going to take the handbrake off? Probably not, because he's Italian. But he has, actually. No, well, we weren't all saying that. Some were saying that, uh, because we did play some good attacking football this year. But, yeah, I think you've just got to look at our goals tally this year. I mean, we aren't afraid of conceding one or two goals. We don't want to do that. But we've got an average of three goals per game in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the league. And I think that'll continue. Uh, looking at the game last week against Norwich, I thought it was a very good team performance. But I, I think a lot of people thought we can still go up another gear. I, I personally think that, that we've got the best the best is yet to come from this team and uh, I think all, over the course of the season yes we'll drop points we've got a tough game on, on Monday but other teams are going to drop points and at, at this stage of the season f uh, five, five points clear a goal difference which is almost double the Manchester United's uh, joint best defence in the league uh, I, I don't see any width so far yeah it's a long way to go but, but uh, you know we'll be there at the end Tony next door to you another City fan Tony do any of your friends think that you've wrapped it up already or is I mean I've got Manchester City friends the DNA is that the sun might not even come up tomorrow because so many things have befallen you over the years uh, there won't be many City fans who think we've got anything wrapped up. Uh, I think the days have gone when uh, we're expecting to lose now, but it'd be overconfident and naive of any City support to say we've got it wrapped up. We've got every reason to believe that this is the start of a fantastic era. And we've heard from our United friends over there about the glories they've had over 10 or 15 years. The view among City fans is that we're starting that process now and that in 10 or 15 years we will have achieved what Manchester United have achieved over the last 10 or 15 years. There's no reason to disbelieve that and it's an exciting exciting time to be a City fan. Alex, how did you do your injury? Uh, uh, it was with the sixth goal. When Deco scored uh, the sixth goal, I got up and celebrated. I told me calf muscle in the left leg. I, was, I ended up in hospital with that. Came home, got up the following morning, shuffling about on my bum and my hands and knees. Got on my good leg. Uh, hobbled across the kitchen to, well, tried to hobble across the kitchen. That went from beneath, beneath me. <laughs> snapped my Achilles. I'm, I'm glad you were laughing. I thought I found it dead funny at the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, snapped my Achilles tendon. I've had, I've had a month in hospital and another <laughs> couple of months before I'm going to be something like right and, you know, uh, chasing United fans down Main Road or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're laughing now. Well, thank you. Anyway. Well, no, no, let, let's think about January and a little bit of uh, investment as well. What do, what do, is there anybody, are there any United players? that we get in the City team? Well, basically, I, I was thought about this a lot. If you took the two teams at the moment yeah. and you, you, you take Manchester City, are we a better team than last year? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Are we improved from last year? Definitely. You look at Manchester United, are they a better team than last year? No chance. They're not even as good as they were three years ago. Yeah. Are they playing well this year? No. 1-11, to 11, Manchester City, there's only two players who I think would get in our team. One would start, probably. <coughs> that would be Ashley Young. And Wayne Rooney on the bench, and that's all who would get in our team. You wouldn't put Vidic in instead of Lescott. I know he's injured, but you know what I mean. If everybody is fit. No, Company and Lescott to me have been the cornerstone of our season this year. They've both been fantastic. Would you play Johnson ahead of Young? I know they play on either side, but they swap. To be fair, I would play Ashley Young. I think Johnson needs just to improve his game a little bit. Fantastic going forward. To me, he doesn't work hard enough going back. Yeah. And that is why if Ashley Young would just get a place in our team. Back to this in a second.